Today I'm going to walk through how to install and register OmniSelect. This will be helpful for both people who are installing it for the first time and those who may be reinstalling it, say because your computer died and now you have to reinstall and re-register on a new computer. Before I get into the installation process, I am going to make note of a couple of uh, Windows settings that you will need to uh, make sure you have things set up correctly before you actually start the installation. The first thing to note is your Windows username. So here we can see the user account that I have. The username I have is simply username. Now you can use whatever name you want as long as there is no space in the username. If there is a space, it causes issues with the database of OmniSelect and it will give you errors and will not work properly. So if you have created a Windows user with a space in the name, you will need to create a new user, give them administrative rights, and then install OmniSelect under that new user that does not have a space in the name. The second setting that we will need to look at is app installation. So if we go under settings and go under apps and then advanced app settings, then this setting here, choose where to get apps. By default, Windows has it set to the Microsoft Store only. We need to take it off of that and uh, select anywhere. That way, when we download OmniSelect from the Phazon website, uh, Windows will allow us to install it. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser and go to phazon.ca and download the latest version of the software. So here we go under Omni Select Software and I'm going to download the Swine version. You should download whichever version is uh, most applicable to you. We will download it. And run it. All right, so here, first thing, it's gonna pop up and uh, say that this is an unrecognized app. At right of ways, you can see there's only a don't run option. So first we need to click this more info. It'll tell us the name of the app, Omni, Omni Select Swine installation file, and now our run anyways button appears. So we can go ahead and click that. A dialog box will pop up asking you if you want to allow an app from an unknown source to make modifications to your computer, and you should say yes. The screen is just showing black right now because my recording software was unable to capture that dialog box just because of the way Windows makes it. And here is the installation setup. So we hit next. Uh, here we need to we need to select all the different modules that we have purchased so as it says if you're just updating a current installation click next because I am doing a first time in installation on this computer I need to select uh, any modules for which I have a license I have a license for all of these modules, so I'm gonna select them all, but you will need to make sure that you select only the ones that you have purchased, but make sure that you select the ones that you purchase. If you don't select anything, and you're doing a first time installation, it will fail to register, because you'll be trying to register no modules, and it won't work. So make sure you check off whatever modules you have bought. Then we are gonna click Next. This is telling us which folder we'd like to install in. That default is fine, so I'll click Next. And then we get to wait for a bit while it 
loads up the program. Alrighty, then we also need to install this PSQL uh, database. So we need to agree to the license terms and install. Set up successful, so then I'll hit close and we'll go back. It's telling me I don't have a PDF reader currently installed. Uh, for now, I'll just click cancel. If you uh, get this pop-up and you do uh, want to display manuals or reports, then you can install whatever uh, PDF reader you, you want to to be able to do that. For now, I'm just going to hit cancel. You can always worry about uh, getting that later. And now we're just programming in the database. And we are just about done with the installation. Alrighty. So then, we'll want to go and log in. And you'll see, uh, once you hit the login button, that it'll pop up and say that we need to register the software. So here you can see it tells you all of the modules that you are looking to install. So those should be all the modules that you ticked off at the start of the installation pro process. And then there's that serial number box. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my serial number. You should put in whatever serial number you have that uh, came with your software. So I'll just enter that in and then press next. Then we have the terms and conditions. We just need to agree to this and press next. And then we have options for registering. I have chosen the web registration and then I'm going to click the register on the web button. So that'll take us to the phase on web page and here I have my information saved so it's real quick to enter it all in. Uh, if your information isn't saved you can just manually go and enter in all those boxes and then click next and that should give you down at the bottom there you have your product key so we need to copy that and then we're gonna flip back over to the registration back over to Omni and we paste that product key into the box and press enable software and once we hit that then Omni is enabled and we are good to go now the default login is sysadmin, oops, admin, and then omni admin, O-M-N-I-A-D-M-I-N. So we'll enter those in and then hit OK. If this is a new installation, you can now begin to enter in your barn information. You can go under configuration, 
you can go under the buildings tab add in some buildings you can go and edit your site identification enter in your site name all that information if you are uh, all installing on a uh, on a new computer because your old computer died and thus you have a backup then you're going to want to go under this backups tab and hit restore backup now you'll need to make sure that you have access to your backup file. So generally, if this is a new computer, that's probably gonna be on a USB drive that you have plugged into this new computer. So we go select backup, and then here I've got all sorts of uh, files on here already for the backup, but I'm just gonna pull this file that I had on my desktop that I specifically saved. Um, like I say, you will probably be uh, going under your PC and then and pulling off a, a USB drive. So we just hit open and then we need to click restore database. It'll give us a warning saying that we are replacing our current database. It cannot be undone. Are we sure we want to do it? Yes, we want to do it because currently our database is empty. So we want to restore and put in all of our uh, all of our old settings and controls. So this is a very small database. If your database is, has a lot more information in it, it will take longer than that, but mine has completed. So we will just close it and then start up Omni Select again. Now, at this point, when Omni starts up, we should see any of our units here. I just have the one unit. And when we go to log in, I just still have the default username and password. If you made a uh, custom one, because you have now loaded your backup, it'll be the exact same as what it used to be. It will, will no longer be the default if you changed it on the... Uh, the database that you had restored from. And loading in, I now see my information is here. It, um, and so then what we want to do to make sure that everything is communicating properly, uh, we're going to go in and start the toolkit. When we do that, then I want to go to serial port slash loopback. Here, currently, my computer uh, does not have a printer or anything uh, connected to it. If, if your computer will have that, then there will probably be multiple serial ports that are going to show up. But here, I am just going to plug my RS-485 into the computer. Okay. Now that that's plugged in, I'm going to press Get Serial Ports. I see a port that appears. Then that, we know, is the uh, serial port that is going to the RS-485. So we want to select that and say Set Port. And now we can see the serial port connected has turned green. It tells us here port 3 is our, uh, or uh, communications 3 is our serial port. So that is good. And then I uh, will go to the devices tab. Uh, let me just plug in my PBX HMC here. Alrighty, so once this is all connected, then what we are going to do is we are going to want to check for all devices and you should see all of your devices appear. So we'll hit that and you can see it tells us our last response time and it pulls out the version. Then uh, if you have things like sorters or other controls that you want to send the settings from Omni to the uh, control, you can hit send settings to all. That'll push out the settings from your Omni configuration, push that out to all the controls. And that has worked successfully. 
Here you can see hit rate. That uh, is a number that is showing you how well it's communicating. And that generally, we can uh, reset the hit rate. And then as it uh, communicates, it should slowly, there we go, jumps up to 100%. So we know that it is communicating with this control successfully. And that is about all. You will now have Omni set up, running. If you had a previous version, we, I've now shown you how to import that database and recover it, and how to make sure that your RS-485 is communicating with your computer, that that's all set up properly, and also that your controllers are communicating. So now you are good to go.